we are going oh we can Games, ah! boards, games, boards, games, board it's game. what we're talking about. Board it's games, hot. boards, games, it's what board, we're on about. Ooh, and I'm hard. gonna have a bit of a bladder what? with this person who is Daniel Danzer. No, Daniel no. Danzer no. is in Germany. <laughs> Daniel I... Danzer today is talking to me. We yeah. are going to be talking about translation, which is a thing which has... A lot of variation in how well it can be done. Translation is something that can facilitate fun. Board games and translation is what we're talking about. Board games and translation. I'm not going to shout, hey! Hey! Great! <laughs> yeah, you it's are correct. Good morning. <laughs> and say, it's says hot. hello. I wanted, I, oh, wanted to, I wanted to join the singing, but you cannot hear yourself, so it's really hard. So I didn't do it. <laughs> Hi, uh, it Tom. Is Bez, I am Bez. It's his bedtime in New Zealand. Um, we are blethering about board games. Today we're talking about translation with Daniel yeah. Danzer. And I reached out to you because we've met v mainly via Alan Paul because... Mm -hmm. yeah. I think it was the first year, maybe, that I went there in 26, 7, I think, yeah, I'm going to say 20, oh, 2016, I think, was my first year. 16, okay. 17, 18, 19, that sounds about correct. Yeah. I think maybe the first year that I went, I didn't meet you, but secondly, 17, I think I met you in person. Yeah, yeah we met and talked a lot, and uh you gave me a copy of your game and so on and so forth. And then we met at Alan Paul and the surprise stare uh, meeting at on Sunday and so on. So, so yeah, we meet each year, but not this year. But now we meet virtually. Well, for, <laughs> for an hour or so. And honestly, like at the end of Essen, it's like everyone's so tired. And we just yeah. have this big meal with the surprise stare people, Alan Paul and Charlie Paul, lovely. And... Um, just a good morning to Alex who jumped in, and yes, there's. I don't know if you can see all the comments, um, yeah. Daniel. So we've got stuff that I don't know what's it. Oder besser gesagt, um, guten Morgen, or in a better way to say. Um, oh, what we stream on German? No, we don't. Also streaming via heute. Uh, is that Auf Deutsch? Should that be heute or is heute correct? Heute. Heute, 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 heute would be a short form uh, in colloquial English. Oh, so this is um, say being very friendly and casual. Casual talking is kind of shorter, of course. But we'll, oh. uh, I, I, I would rather join uh, the English crowd and not you try to speak German. Aber Sie sagen bitte. Um. <laughs> yeah. Umgangssprache sind ja hier im Chat. Well, is, is Will Cook for board games? Are you German or what? Um, well, is, is so their name German? is Xate, and they are basically German, but also American. Ah, um, and there's another one who's living in Germany, learning Deutsch here. Great, so international crowd, always the best. <laughs> so, um, but we are going to be talking in English, but, yeah, um, yeah ich, ich lebe... Is that how you say it? Take oh, he's living at Leipzig. She Leipzig is a beautiful city. I was there last year. It was it was it's great. I I love Leipzig a lot. So you're a lucky guy. Um, girl or person? So say it says not a guy. Oh okay. Oh oh yeah. I have to get used to that. Okay, sorry. <laughs> um, Chris says ich bin große Stütze Einhorn. Um, yeah, I should get you to read the German. Yeah, he, he's a he's a huge and proud unicorn, as you can see on the picture. Anyway, um, Translation is eine Frau. we have um, talks about <laughs> who you yeah. are. Um, you have like decades of experience at translating games. You've done some, well, more than one decade. We can say that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's and true. so. Um, you've got more than one decade of experience translating games. You started off with 
doing something for Alan Paul uh, and uh, Confucius. Let me kiss. Yeah, yeah, I am again. I just switched. Uh, no, uh, Confucius was one of the first games. Yeah, he. And, it was. It was funny. How, but it's a long story. So. <laughs> um, you've got go to, well, we'll get into that in a few minutes, and then you've yeah. done Pandemic Legacy Season One, which I've never really played many games in German, so I can't, I can't directly say whether your translations are good or not. But everyone I hear says that they're pretty good, so I'm going to trust them. <laughs> <laughs> and at the yeah. point that you're being commissioned to do like one of the biggest games, um. Yeah, and um, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm not saying that Daniel's the best translator because how can I know? I don't speak a good enough German. If you're translating <laughs> German into English and I could even compare you to other yeah. people, then maybe I could be giving a more informed opinion. But yeah. <laughs> well, that's that's true. I, and it's uh, I have to say the, the situation in Germany uh, got better in the last decade. Uh, regarding translations back in 2007 or when I started translations into German were sometimes rather well crappy and sometimes there was not much money in it and somebody did it and it was all right so well and then it's now right now there are a couple of people who do it on on a real high level like Michael Krönert who made uh, code names into German and and other people who are really more into a professional, uh, professionally working than a decade ago. So right now the the level of the standards are higher, but I, I hope that I can still uh, keep mm. up. <laughs> and uh, it is um, it is a complicated thing, to say, well the least, <laughs> to translate I'm... because of several. Uh, uh, things yeah no it sounds like the game has really been raised it's kind of like you're yeah doing something like code names or where the words on the cards matter so much yeah. because it's not just about translation it's really about that adaptation because the co word yeah. code names the words need to have multiple meanings they need to right. be easy to relate to right. and so it's all about the connotations of the words not just the literal right. meaning and That's what I, I talked to. I talked with Michael Kröner, who did it uh, uh, about that, and and he said it was a really long process to to get to get uh, uh, words out, words in, and which kinds of words, and so on. It was a really a huge process to to adapt or to localize into something that works in German as well as the English or Czech or whatever version. It's that's why I mentioned it because it's really. Uh, it's it's really a, 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 a he did it in a really great way. He talked about some details, but it was really, uh, uh, yeah. It this is not just translate a text, you know. If you just translate hmm. a text, that's one thing. But you translate, you localize a, a word game like that or other games. You have to to keep in mind so many levels on about the language and what's going on, the rules and and. And the country and everything and the gamers mm. and so on. So to localize, but this is a topic right now. Okay, yeah. you want to make an introduction. So, so. yeah, we <laughs> some, introduced some minor things. This is Daniel. <laughs> Daniel is amazing. And hello, Jess. It's lovely to see you. Um it says hello, Daniel and Bez and Xate. And Xate says, Can I translate the L deck for you, Bez? And I think this is just a joke because. Obviously, the L deck itself has already been played in German and French mm -hmm. and Italian and I believe Dutch. But um, yeah, it's we'll get into all sorts of translation and all this stuff that's involved in a moment. But first, let's take a step back and let's yeah. talk about brilliant things. Brilliant things. What's the little thing which is brilliant? Well, ah. Uh... Yeah, I, I have to choose one now, you know, because we talked about two, uh, uh, four. But I, I, I would like to choose this one, I guess. Uh, it's a little thing. Most people know it. Many people have it. Uh, but to me, it's really ingenious. It's this one. It's a retractable pencil. And mm. this special kind is by Faber-Castell. It's made of metal. So it's it has a rubber thing here. So it doesn't you know and then you can 
make whenever you want you have a pencil with you uh, you cannot see because of the, you know you can just push and then you have a pencil wherever you want ah uh, here we see it and if you don't need it anymore you just put it away and it cannot break and it's always sharp and everything and here in the back you also have a, a re an eraser you see you can <laughs> oh wow so you've got if it's, an yeah, extendable eraser it right. extends and this oh is really gosh. great and you have several mines you can put into so you have a reserve and it's always with me and so no idea is getting lost and you can keep everything you know and you can have several thicknesses available so you have you can have several with several uh different thick pencils and so on so this is my favorite thing i always i always have with me because if you have an idea it's lost in a second or you you think i yeah. i will keep this in mind no problem and then you are on a, on a train or whatever you go home and you think i had this idea but what was it again and you don't have it so i have several of these two or three one is beside my bed one is in my pocket one is in my you know because it has to be with me so all the time of course you need some paper mm -hmm. but well there could be some digital things many people make it on smartphones now and i why like pencil? this why not just a pen because a pencil is more um you can you can more um because well why why i don't know <laughs> a good question because it doesn't um because it doesn't <laughs> well, you, it's more it's more natural and organic to me it's a it's a pen it's always with the ink it's always like uh and you cannot erase most uh, pens hmm. you know with this I, I you can erase stuff or and you can paint a little make a drawing with this more easily with different yeah, darknesses and so on yeah, yeah. it's more organic you know it, you can make it you, can, you see yeah you, you cannot you cannot you cannot do something like this with a pen it's more hmm. you know it's more organic each line has a has is living so i like mm. i like i like this so uh, and it's only you know it's four euros or something so it's nothing but it's great to have a couple of these and yeah ideas i think <laughs> that yeah mechanical pencils are a great thing and i went into um double h smith to buy a nice mechanical pencil and i was like okay well there's three different ones and all of them come in multi-packs to be honest multi-packs it kind of suits me because maybe i want to have one here one in the kitchen yep. but it also feels kind of wasteful do you know what i mean because if mm -hmm. you're buying them in packs of four or six it feels like they almost expect you unless you're giving them out to a classroom which might be great okay here's eight mechanical pencils okay you've got children okay give it to them that's great. And no, I, I buy them one by one. I, I, I buy the next one if I lose one. <laughs> so mm. I don't buy them in packs. I just have my, my small store <coughs> uh, store for stuff like that. And I go there. And, I okay, mean, what I, I ended up doing was to buy the three different versions that there were to see, <laughs> okay, which ones of these would I actually prefer? And in my conclusion currently is that there's not that much difference. But maybe I would have been better off going okay, I'll get one very nice one, as you do, because yeah. sometimes it's just, yeah. And good morning, Michael. We're just talking about how brilliant uh, mechanical pencils are. Especially this one. <laughs> no, it's, but, so, yeah. it's so functional. It's so greatly designed. You know, it really, this, this thing here works really good. It, it doesn't break off, you know, it's it's slim, it's not the, th the thick, it's it's perfect for my hand and so on. So so especially this version is just perfect for me. It has no, it's form follows function, it has everything a good design has to have. So that's, that's why this is one thing I will not miss anymore. And hello <laughs> Scott, um, who's wondering whether they should continue watching us or should they get back to translating the rules for a Hungarian card game into English? Um, I would say that it's up to you. And um, we're probably going to go off topic for about 15 minutes or so. Um, which if you want to know more about Daniel, then stick around. If you 
like you'll be able to see what we're talking about from the banners at the bottom. Well, I would I would say, Scott, it depends on the deadline. If the mm. if the translation has to be finished by tonight, well, you should go on. But if you just start it, well, <laughs> then you might uh, <laughs> stick here with us. And um, Michael <laughs> says. Um, there is little better than finding something you can write with that just works perfectly. That's why I'm sad we don't have a Muji store here. Oh, okay. And let's and Scott apparently speaks Hungarian, Spanish, and Portuguese, which Whew. I think I'm going to use that as my first question. But first of all, everyone, I invite you to talk about some. Recent highlights, recent highlights, living life and seeing the sights. Recent highlights, recent highlights, living life, playing games and other delights. Recent highlights. Recent highlight. Uh, it has nothing to do with board games. But my recent highlight was I woke up, I guess, uh, three weeks ago on Monday morning. And I lay in bed and I thought about... Uh, and then half of my dream and half awake, I had the first page of a novel I wanted to write 15 years ago, which had several stars and several things. And and I just, you know, put it in a drawer and, and so on. And then the first page was in my mind and I started writing. And after 10 days, I had written the first draft of a 160 pages novel. And wow. it was in 10 days. And it was just like so easy. It was just coming out of me. And this was a flash of creativity I had not experienced for a long time. And I have no idea where it's coming from. But it was just, you know, and I have my work, everyday work and so on. But each day I wrote 15 pages. <laughs> I don't know. And now I'm on the second draft and it's going on very well. And it was really like, what's going on? It's it's great. It's a it's a more children's book or young young people's book or whatever about a girl who is growing wings, but in a really realistic way. It's not oh. like swept. Oh, you are a fairy. You have wings, but it's really the process of growing wings and what does wow. it makes to you because you are not you don't know what this is. Is this wrong? Is this just bad? If does it make me a freak or will I fly? someday wow. you don't know and this is kind of about this process so it's a new approach about uh, 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 uh books for for young people and i i'm really I, I just i don't know it's great it was this absolute highlight on in the last months for me <laughs> so mm -hmm. it's not about games but you see i'm i'm a storyteller and a writer and whatever so it all comes together in my head and it's coming out no, I really okay, like yeah, that's this it. no, I really <laughs> like this idea of um I love it when books are kind of taking this simple trope of growing wings, but then really exploring the details of mm -hmm. how exactly would this feel like. Yeah. Or things that games that are about time travel. I genuinely don't know any published board games that feel like they are about time travel. There was this one by oh, I remember their name now, Matthew Puffett. Um, which is unpublished. I showed it to ACG. They said it was too complicated to be publishable. Like, I completely disagree. Um, <laughs> because for I enjoyed it. It is yeah. about um, four hours, and but it it's such an intense four hours, and it works so well to players. And once you're two players, you know, a long game isn't such a bad thing. You Anyway, so like... Mm -hmm. I'm not going to get into this one game by Matthew Puffett that's completely... Yeah, I am dissing on anachrony. Sorry, David. It doesn't um it doesn't feel like a um time travel game. Yeah. <laughs> no, um no, I don't think you've played oh Scott's talking about the game that are translating. But um yes, this game I just um oh, it's so sad that just hasn't found the right publisher yet, but they are not that invested, they're a maths teacher. And so they made this game where you go back in time and so you know what's going to happen because mm -hmm. you know the causality. So all the troops that have already been told what to do, they're going to do those same things again. 
But then you go back in time and then every and then your new troops that have gone back in time by spending time crystals, now you can change it. But you only mm. actually go back in time and start running through literally everything when there's like a time dilation. Anyway, mm -hmm. so yeah, for me, none of the games that I know of kind of really feel like <sighs> anyway. Well, I guess I guess it's one of the uh, topics or themes or, or whatever that are really hard to translate into a game because it gets so complicated so fast. So if mm. I have a, uh, have a novel or a, a film or whatever, it can really concentrate on certain things and it can it has the freedom to be, uh, well, it can be constructed by an author or, or a filmmaker in a really great way, but in a game has to be open and if you open up time travel to certain possibilities then you have this exploding possibilities and and then it's not a game anymore but mm. uh, and so this is really hard to to come by i guess there was one oh. game kind of historical with or in a, in a parallel universe it's it's 10 or 15 years old i guess it has three maps three maps looking the same at the beginning and, and but these are three times in this landscape and then you can start to go back or, or um, change things in the past that have uh, consequences in the next levels and mm -hmm. I, I i forgot the name but um it was again too complicated for many people to to realize what's going on on the several levels so it's always this making things too too much exploding so we've got um jess who wants to give a shout out to poutine um which was being had for breakfast and jess also want is giving a shout out to among us the little okay. video game i okay. um want to give a shout oh whoop i need to be very careful with these because they are very small but quite expensive and I got opened a box last night. It was okay. in a mysterious box. So they kind mm -hmm. of all, okay. you can't really see. But basically, if well, you take okay. any one of these things separately, each one of these hexagons is its own little game. And okay. then you hold okay. this one for three seconds and then you put them together. And then they all start learning the game. It's like a lo little loading bar. And then once it's uh -huh. loaded, and um, once it turns green, then you can play the game. Anyway, I played okay. a little thing <laughs> of um, Zen Zen Loops, I think it was called, which is not a game really, just kind of making lots of patterns with it. But let me actually try and turn. But, these but off. the games you, but the games you play then are, are uh, digital games or what, or, uh, the or games, board games, or what kind game, of games? I'm still not sure whether I would describe them as board <laughs> games or digital games because it uses digital technology because the lights represent the state of this thing. But you mm -hmm. are moving these pieces in very prescriptive ways that you understand the rules of. So it's okay. like you have um, one. There are yeah. a couple of one player games, but most of the games are for two, three, four, five, mm -hmm. six players. Right. And so I'm planning to actually show it off to Chris and McCall to play them. And then you move these hexagons together, but hmm. then they make sorts of. Games. That sounds great. I, I, I was into uh, designing hybrid games five years ago, a bit more, and discussed it with many, many people. And I think this is a, this is a great uh, thing. I, I was coming up with hybrid uh, elements that you, uh, digital elements that you can add to uh, different board games and and uh, and stuff like this. So I, I think that's that's a good one. You have to you have to uh, tell me or write somewhere what what that is and how it's called. Uh, I, I like the approach of, of combining this um, and uh, because to, to combine elements of digital possibilities and the still tactile and together playing board games at a table, that's great. Now, and this then is you just... get little boxes of six yeah. of them and okay. then you get six different games inside okay. and then there's like a quick start rule plus... Uh, yeah. For each of the games, like Paintbrush, you have all the rules okay. for Paintbrush. This, you have the rules okay. for Dark yeah, Ball. 
And yeah, that's great. You have components, uh, com interactive components interacting with each other. That that's a great mm. thing that is possible now, and that's that's yeah yeah. Hybrid games are really. I was uh, I was really into thinking what what is a good hybrid game. Uh, a good hybrid game is a game that is not even better if you play it on the PC and you don't know the elements, uh, the, the actual elements, and. If it's not better to make a board game out of it and get rid of the of the digital stuff, but games that are that can only exist as a hybrid game, then it's a good hybrid game. Mm. Uh, I had an idea for for a, a crokinole crokinole oh, game yes. like flipping, but but the 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 in the middle of crokinole was not a hole but a sensor. So and uh, the so the, for the those who don't know crokinole, the crokinole and, there's lots of little things that you need to flick and then get them into a hole and right. dodge the little bumpers and dodge other people's pieces and really it's minimalistic really minimalistic and my thought was to in the middle there's a sensor best in the board and the little the the the, the pieces you you flip or, or what are are um sensible so the sensor you can flip through the middle and the sensor will say hey yeah it was a it was a piece of yours and if you make a stone uh holding on in the middle then the sensor gets the time how long it is there and the the opponent mm. has to flip it away again so so here's also something it's that, real time and it's a real time and it's an actual it's a flipping game so it's really around the table and and uh, each player has a, a set a, a, well, like a, a, so a given time, like a given time. Almost like it's aerial great. control, um, yeah. King of the Hill. So it could be like okay, <laughs> we, um, within the center, this is like the center target where any pieces here matter now. And it might right. be that okay, if there's um, maybe one in the middle, very middle, then it counts as I don't know right. five, but like anything, just because getting. It could be like, okay, now you're trying to flip away everything as quickly as you can. But yeah. how do you stop um, in a real time? Yeah, I'm yeah, not going to ask about the design of this <laughs> thing because you no, know, it's, this is... no, it's just it's just that this hybrid thing is really it really worked well as a prototype, but it it would have been much too expensive to publish and to construct it. You know, and like, so yeah, some technology maybe has now it's on. better. Yeah, I know, but now, but now I spread the idea so everybody can come up with the game. <laughs> uh, well, well, it's it's kind of uh, yeah, technology went on, so maybe well, we we will maybe we'll go on with that. But you see, well, I my mind is working all the time on several mm. stuff. Hybrid games. I, that's what I why I liked what you showed. It's just really interactive and different things, and it's still a board game like Hive or whatever. With the hexagons moving, but these hexagons can interact and you know do things that are not much more complicated than in a board game because it's just you know in a on a computer level. And the, the timing in this crokinole time of game was really the timing was per hundreds of seconds. So you can really make oh no, he's ahead of me, and there, there was a display showing how long it was. So you really want to oh no, he's ahead. Of, he had a longer time having these things in the middle. And you cannot do it in a board game. It's impossible to keep time in a board. How, how would you do it? It's it's just mm. impossible. And it was really a fast game where everybody was sweating after five minutes. So the prototype was working great, but it was a huge uh, achievement to create the prototype and and with several technologies and so on. So, okay, like, now let's, let's... let's switch to the next thing. <laughs> and... Um... Yeah, Jess in the comments is just saying that reaching out to the students are enjoying games. Jess is starting to play Among Us to learn that. That sounds brilliant. I'd love to play that myself at some point. I'm yeah. just going to... Um... And Jess says that they like German and Japanese for some reason. So there you go. Let's talk about the questionably quick questions. Questionably quick questions! Are you ready? Uh, no. Okay, start. What? Well, tough. What's the last game you played? My prototype. <laughs> Which prototype? Are you allowed to say what uh, it is? Well, a prototype of uh, a dice card, a real car, a real time action, quick game. Uh, recently at three publishers, I guess. Oh, nice. Oh no, 
it was my abstract with my son together, I guess. I don't know. One of my prototypes. I don't play much, <laughs> much games anymore. <laughs> Is that because of COVID? No. Well, I get kind of... Mm, uh, I don't know. It's kind of fatigue of, you know, no new games, new games, new games, new games, new games. Yeah. And they are not that new most of the time. And after 10 years of playing many, many, many games, I, I think of, yeah, well, <laughs> I don't I mean, know. you've been doing this professionally for hmm. how many years? How many years would is translation been your main job? Well, uh, not the main job, not even yet. Uh, no, not now. I have my day job still. So, but on on this day, maybe for I guess it was really a step forward in 2013. I guess when Asmodee was contacting me and they gave me each month a new game. So this was great. Uh, but but yeah, I, I played many of these prototypes of the games I translate. I play, of course, yeah. Uh, but even here, the last translation was. Mm, beginning of the year so uh it was a huge one so i had no time and then you are probably right because of covid i had not many people asking me to do things and uh so right now it's kind of low level next question and with with asmodee you know doing you a new game every month does that mean that you took more days off your norm other day job uh, no, uh, well, the day job is only a half-time job, 50% job. I support young people doing their films. I'm also a screenwriter and so on and work with young people. And it's only a half-time job, so I have enough time to create stuff. But my personal life was in the last years really messing up, uh, you know, including divorce and everything you want. And uh, so it was kind of uh, overwhelming to organize everything and a new relationship and moving and, I don't know, lawyers and uh, everything, everything bad. So it was not that much in everything else. So, well, yeah, life's going on. Life is very, uh, uh, what's the English word? Spannend. What is spannend? Uh challenging you know um, chaotic compelling or i don't know yeah yeah chaotic it's intriguing i don't know it's it's kind of it uh, well you have to go on all the time with too many things Ooh. exciting yeah exciting is a good word life is exciting all the time anyway <laughs> with exciting an with of, an air of suspense <laughs> suspense yeah suspense so, yeah <laughs> well um, no no Divorce is fine. After thirty years, it was time. So I, I'm, I'm over. I'm over it. It's, it's kind of, it's okay now. But it, the last years, it was kind of dragging and really hard. But now I'm, I, I'm over it. It's not only light at the end of the tunnel. I'm through the tunnel already. So, so it's just it's asks okay. how young are your people, hmm? the oh. small little people. Well, the, the ones I'm writing for, or the, your people, my my people, oh, the people I, I work with, uh, no, it's uh, more, uh, yeah, teenager and young adults, so from 15 up to 25 or something, and um, when they start to to make films by their own, and and I support them with screenwriting and and editing and everything. I have equipment to to give to them for no money and so on. We have a monthly group where people can network and so on and so forth. They have a little festival for 12 years now for uh, Jugendliche is the German word, and I never knew what the English word is. It's like young a youth people, club? teenagers, or I don't know, teenagers are 13 to 19, but. Jugendlich is kind of well, yeah, youth. Yeah, you. I work at a youth center actually. Yeah, mm. youth. Yeah, young, young people. Youth. Okay. So, how old is Jugend Cliche? Can what, you give us is? an exact? How young is Jugend Cliche? Is there an exact age range? No, no, it's not. If, if there are people who are twelve and make their first films by their own, they can come up and all is fine. But but mostly, you know, younger they are more staying at home, doing things in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. I'm at the center of the town, of the city of Stuttgart. So people have to, you know, find their way to our youth center first. And uh, we don't have a neighborhood with too many uh, 
flats and so on. It's in the center of the city. So people have to, and usually they, they start with 14, 15, they start to think about making films on their own with their smartphone or whatever. Okay, so the final question I'm going yeah. to ask, unless anyone else has any questions that are dying to ask, which are off topic. And um, the final question I want to ask is, well, we've already actually two more questions. Firstly, where exactly are you? Um, I, we know you are in Germany. Where exactly are you? Uh, I live in Stuttgart, which is uh, in the southwest, close to the Black Forest. Uh, the city where Mercedes-Benz and Porsche and all these cars are built. So there's a lot of money here. So the youth center is well equipped. Uh, Stuttgart Airport, yeah, of course. And uh, yeah, that's that's where I am exactly. And the final question. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I'm going to change it to this one. So, would you prefer to have a meeple-sized duck or a duck-sized meeple? So, yeah, I don't yeah, know yeah. if it's a different name in German with carcass on the meeple. Is yeah, meeple, meeple, yeah, meeple. I know meeples. Uh, and uh, uh, you know, uh, you mean a real living duck or uh, just a uh, real living duck that is the size of a meeple? Yeah, it would be amazing. Or this? No, 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 I don't need a huge wooden meeple, but a <laughs> small duck would be great. <laughs> Could fly around and swim around and mark, 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 but it's small. It would be fantastic. Yeah, a meeple sized duck, of course. What else? Okay. I think that. Did anybody choose the different uh, thing? Yeah, a couple of people have chosen the other one because right. maybe there are concerns about caring for this thing. Anyway. It's so small, it doesn't need so much. <laughs> you just leave it out the window, it can care for itself. But it comes back because it likes you. And hello, Chris. No, that's not true. You, it's just <laughs> when you're here that people are choosing that one. Um, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but um, yeah. we've got... Let me get to the main topic and let me remind people that um, to ask questions, comment as you want from like follow. And so, yeah, what is translation? Let's go with some sort of definition. Um, wow, what is translation? It is to, to take something and change it so another group of people can have access to it or understand it, probably, uh, well, one 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 standard is to, they they should understand the same thing as the original, but another thing is it's a different group of people, so you have to translate it into another language, another mindset, another universe, another world. It's kind mm. of you probably know you probably know the uh, as a kid there were some kids versions of Robinson Crusoe, for instance. Or Oliver Twist, or even Huckleberry uh, um, Finn. It's uh, it's written. It was written for adults, and there were young versions. It's kind of a translation too. It's not only language. It's it's kind of to make it accessible for a different group. And if you talk about English to German, the only thing I I am able to do is German gamers are completely different from French gamers or English, or American gamers. So you have to really change it into something that is the same game, of course, mm -hmm. but language-wise and, and text-wise, it might be some differences here and there. So, so translation is really complicated <laughs> thing. So you're really blurring the line between translation and adaptation and almost variance. It's like you, by the definition that you're giving, which I like it, I'm not disputing it because it's a very people-centric focus. It's yeah. kind of saying, okay, we're bringing it to a new audience. If it's an adult version, we're bringing it to children. So in a bind junior, you could say, or, well, 
Yogi Jr., if that ever comes out, would be almost like, okay, we're translating this game for an even younger audience who's maybe four or five years old. Or My Little Scythe, you could say My Little Scythe is yeah. a translation of Scythe. If you want to. I mean, I mean, you ask uh, very generally what is a translation. So I, I thought about really generally. Uh, of course, if I say I, I take uh, Splendor or Pandemic Legacy Part 1 or whatever, and you have to translate it from English to German, then, of course, we talk about a more restrictive uh, definition mm. of, of, of things. But, but uh, in general, it's, it's really this transition uh, into, into another... Yeah, it, it's the same, but in a different... Uh, exp uh, um, ah, Erscheinung... Anybody? Uh, um, it's a form, form or shape. Form. It's it's kind it's kind of different. So yeah, and and because we, we, we if you talk about this target group thing, especially because I, I worked a lot for Asmodee, which ha uh, who had a lot of, of of originally French titles, and I always say give me the English version because I'm not that good at French, but give me the original French version too, of course, because I can read and understand French in a way and i want to uh, um, you know see if there are any differences into english already or what uh, and then i start from the english version but there were almost no game rules so far and i did i guess a hundred plus uh when the game was not on the market already but it was you know in the development process then I always ask so many questions to the designer or the editors, and they almost always changed the original rules because of my questions and because mm -hmm. of my additions. Because I said, here's an inconsistency, or here's something not clear. Here's something that has to be added, at least for the German market, because German gamers are rule lawyers. They look at each detail and each word. There were a discussion mm. on Board Game Geek about Pandemic Legacy 1 about the use of a semicolon. If it should have been a comma or a semicolon. And people so, were... Does, did it change the... It was really... The... No, not really. And I used the semicolon for a purpose and it was correct. But some people thought it should have been a comma. It would have been much more clearer. I said, people, it's a game and it's one... I don't know what we're talking about. So, but Germans are really, really, really precise. And the French, you know, in, in France, it's if it's not in the rule, it's okay. You can do whatever you want. <laughs> in Germany, it's <laughs> no, 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 no. What if it's not in rule? The rule is not complete. So I had to add many things. And sometimes the Germans, well, I'm a German too. So sometimes I think, yeah, <laughs> you know, you pick up the card and place it in front of you. It's a simple, it, it never occurred. But, you know, in France, it could be, yeah, pick up a card, uh, look at it and put it in front of you. So what do you miss? Well, you miss if you put it in front of you, you know, face up or face down. Mm. Of course, it's, it's a complete different, right? Mm. It's different mm. if you place the card face up in front of you. Everybody can see it or face down. And, and in France, in France, it could be that the rule is it doesn't say. And then you ask a designer, and the designer says, "Well, usually people make it face down, but it doesn't matter." And you say, "Okay, in Germany, this would be a no-go. You should say face up or face down. And if it's open to the player, you have to say that. You have to say in a special sentence, you can make it face down or face up. It's up to the players. Then it's clear." But if you just don't write it, you just say, put it down. German, The Germans would say it's a bad rule, it's not complete, and so on. So this is a kind of extreme, extreme uh, example. But there were examples like this, where people put up some chips or whatever, placed them back, and it was not clear up or down. And I had rules where I have to, I had dozens of questions like this to the designer. And even in, uh, especially in France, they are really open. They say, well, this is a game and everybody is doing something with it. And in Germany, everybody wants to play exactly the same game. So you have to adapt this from <laughs> into German precise. 
if it's a game uh, like it, of course there are social games or whatever where it's more open-minded and and more. But you have to keep in mind that the German asks uh, different questions, and so, and of course, as a translator, I was I was. It took me years to realize it. If I translate a game, I am the first human being reading the rules without knowing the game already. So the designer knows and develops. No, they, should, the, they should have done blind testing before, you know. Yeah, you yeah, in their in their language, yeah. But most of the time, they believe me. It, they change then something in the rules, but the final rules they want to have translated, I'm not sure. And I'm so, so many times I say, this is not consistent. You use several vocabulary. You don't introduce vocabulary. You just use it and then you introduce it what two pages later. You can't do mm. that. So I'm, and people, if they know the game and even blind testing, yes, they should. But I have so many texts where I say, Wow, strange. This is not this is not really working. And the first reading is the most important thing. I always print it out and have a red pen in my hand. And if I don't understand it immediately, I just make a make a mark. I say here's something not working. Because game rules are the most tricky texts in the world. It's these are texts that everybody wants to have understood but don't want to read them you know everybody on the table wants to know the game but nobody wants to listen the rules have to be i don't know it's it's kind of nobody reads uh, rules for a game for pleasure you know as any other text as a novel or an article or whatever it's just a, a technical text it only has to put the rules into your mind and it has to do it quickly and so on. So nobody wants this text. Everybody wants to avoid the rule text, but they want to have understood. So it's really... Poo. It's kind of something that needs to step out of your way as easily as possible. But yeah, well, still, um, I mean, we don't really have um, much public analysis of the rules like people talk about the player boards and the pieces mm -hmm. because i guess yeah everyone sees these rules as an obstacle and yeah i've got some two page um one two technically page four of this eight page rule book and already it's kind of like well in the setup are you putting yeah. these pieces on the intersections or on the board because in the icon it shows everything on the intersections whereas yeah. you know i assumed that it was on the spaces but i'm honestly not 100 percent sure i'm hoping i'll yeah. find out by the time i get to the end of the rule sheet and <laughs> you know maybe we yeah. can play that together right. tonight chris and Nicole. so 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 to me it's always important if people ask me uh, uh hey can you translate uh the, the rules for me uh, for us i say First of all, give me everything you have. Give me all uh, the graphics. Give me all. Give me the layout. Give me all you have. Not only the text, because as you say, I have to see the examples. I have to see uh, uh, the, the the components. I have to know how large a component is, because in Germany there are very different. Uh, uh, different vocabulary for small, uh, larger things. I have to know of which material they are, and so on and so forth. They have many questions, and I want to have everything. Uh, you know, I, I did translation for uh, first it was uh, Terror in Meeple City, and then it was Rampage, I guess, by Space Cowboys with the city you build up, and the meeples and the dinosaurs are coming and eating the meeples. And the, uh, five years ago or so, it's a, it's a fun game. And it was so important to have the illustrations of the dinosaurs because these are really, you know, really crazy comic-like uh, stuff and they have different costumes and so on. And if you have the illustration, because they have special names and to, to meet the, the, the attitude and the, and the, 
you know, the level of how funny they are or whatever they mean. If you only have the word, only the name of this dinosaur, you don't, you don't have an idea. If you see the illustration, you know, ah, mm -hmm. I have another name for the dinosaur in German that really fits. So you really work in a, in a different way than just translating text. You really have yes. to understand the game, play the game. The best of case, you have a prototype. Or and I don't think this happens, but I almost feel like ideally you'd want to have the translator play the game on yeah. camera, make sure, and then the designer or the developer at least, like who the project manager of the game, watches yeah. that to make sure that it's 100% correct. Because I've known examples where the rules have been written and even corrected to mean something that the original designer did not intend. And it wasn't that the person changing it thought, oh, this is better. They just um, misinterpreted it. So yeah. it's actually... It's a lot of communication. I always ask so many questions. I always tell the, the people, if a publisher coming to me and say, hey, do you want to translate the game? I say, okay, need the email address of the designer <laughs> or the editor or developer or whatever, because the first thing I will do is ask a lot of questions. How do you mean this? How this is somehow mis can be misinterpreted, maybe by myself, but it's not completely clear to me. And so I ask again and again and again and again, and I annoy people a lot. But it's it's necessary. It's really I don't want to make mistakes. And I see so many English versions I get. If I read the French version, I see that even the English version is not correct. <laughs> it's not correct mm. because I see in the French, I understand French enough, and in English it was somehow, you know, ambiguous. I said, Well, what this is it that way or that way? And then I look up the French and it's perfectly clear in French, maybe. I say, mm. Hey, your English version is not so good at this point. And I understand it this way. Is it correct that I put this into German? So it's really a process of communication. It's not only I get a text and I translate it into some German. That was that was ex uh, exactly how I how I uh, started everything because Confucius by Alan Paul was um, put on Board Game Geek and it was uh, close to Essen, I guess, or summer or whatever. And uh, I was really interested into the theme old China getting gifts. It was kind of, and I liked the design. And I wrote to Alan Paul without knowing him, without ever met him. And yeah, I wrote, it's hey. all about the kind of when you get gifts, you feel some debt yeah. to the other person and you have to give gifts. So giving gifts can be actually a way to trap people in a political right. situation. Yeah, and that, that was great. And he wrote back and, and I said, well, maybe I can, maybe I can, uh, um, make something to, to make it in German. And he said, yeah, we have already a translation. I can send this to you. And then he sent me the German translation and it was made by a professional German translator, but she hadn't played a board game ever. So it was a perfect German text and it didn't make any sense <laughs> because it was not a game. It was just, it was somehow the text, but you know, she had no experience in special gaming terms and so on. And, and, and I said to Ellen, this is not a rule. This is a pretty German text, but it doesn't mean anything. I mean, it's extremely now, but it was really kind of, kind of, and I said, well, I will over, I will do rework all this. I said, oh, this would be great if we had, of course, do it. And then I started to rework and I started to not do 100% of the text new, but it was a hard work. And then Alan Paul was really happy that somebody had a look. And then I realized how important it is that you are a board gamer or a kind of game designer. I, I design also kind of games a little bit and back then. And, and that you're really a kind of gamer who knows what a board game rule has to be and not only a writer or something like that or a translator. And then I got into more and more projects. And then, yeah. But this, this is exactly what why it's so important that uh, people are really into the board game scene and, and everything. We have a couple of questions. Um, so quickly, Alex is asking, do you charge extra for rules developments? It feels inevitable almost that you and Paul, you care enough about doing the craft that you're going to touch into developments anyway. Um, but do you ever 
okay, if this is too bad a state, you charge extra, or would you be interested in actually doing developments officially? Well, yeah, well, I, 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 in the last couple of years, I also did some work that were beyond translation, did some uh, checking, checking facts for trivia games or even editing rules. Uh, there was a Swiss uh, publisher who was republishing a game that was published, you know, in a, in a kind of private way and uh, by some, by just some people and they liked it, they want to republish it. But the game rules were absolutely non-professional. It was really like some buddies came together and wrote something down and, and there were so many inconsistencies and so many un unclear stuff that I said, okay, I have to restructure the whole thing. And they liked the idea and said, yeah, do it. And then of course I said, okay, I can do this and I charge for this, it was not a translation at all. But, you know, if it's in the translation process where I say, well, for the the localization for German people, this should be a bit different here or there. It's kind of included. And I include, well, my, my fee is... Uh, is a, is a fee, I fix it from the very beginning. I say, give me everything you have. I calculate, because of my experience, uh, how, what is the, the language level, the game complexity level, and all these things, and how much has to be done after first reading. And then I say, okay, my fee is about that, and this is not negotiable. I say, this is my price, and... You pay this, and I f and I will ask questions, and I follow you. Uh, uh, not only the first draft, but after that, I will follow the correction. I re I correct your layout, the German version, until it will be printed. I will follow you all the all all through through until the end for this price. But the price is fixed. It's not like. You know, we are not on a bazaar where you say, ah, it's too so much and this and this and this. Say, so this is my price. If, if, if it's too high, then goodbye. Yeah. Because I, I don't have time for that. No. <laughs> the whole notion that you can um, do a print run of, and I didn't realize this early on, it's kind of crazy how everything is kind of negotiable, that you can do a print run of, you know, 2,000 games, 3,000 games, which I know this is very small for a big company like Casper but for me, it's a big number. And, <laughs> um, you know, going, saying, okay, how much is yours? How much is yours? And you ask multiple people, and then you ask to compare the services, you compare the material to think about, okay, coming from China, it will take this much extra time. And then... I say, well, thank you very much. I'm going to go with this other person. Um, it seems like given the prices, I, to be honest, didn't want to go with China unless it was going to be cheaper than elsewhere. I would rather keep it within Europe because then it's faster to get to me. And then they say, oh, but we will price match. We will change the number. And it's like, you know, probably this is why there's actual people I know someone whose entire job it was just to go and negotiate with people and get a <laughs> um, better price. Like yeah. they work for Hasbro and like, like they basically yeah. just manufacturers give us a better price. How cheap can we get this? Well, yeah, not 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 with me. I mean, you can you can compare my price and my services and whatever to somebody else's, and then you decide. But I I just because because. Otherwise, I, 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 I must, you know, calculate something and say, well, I put 20% on that because I know we will negotiate and meet in the middle. But it's, it's hours of time to negotiate. I don't want to write emails. No, it's not that because mm. of this. Because I just have to say, this is my price tag. And that's it. Because it doesn't make it to me, it doesn't make sense. You know, it's a couple of hundred euros most of the time for translation. And, and 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 I don't uh, I I don't work another hour just to meet a price I I don't I don't care then they should they they if they, if they want if it's too expensive they know the price tag finish some people try to and I always say no because it's both risk it's risky anyway it's risky on my side because if I miscalculate it and I see why it's much more work than I thought 
then I'm really, well, I have the trouble, you know. And I, I sometimes I was, now I have my experience, but but even a couple of years ago, I, go, I, I set the price too low. And that's my risk. It's never too high because I, 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 you know, I read the whole thing. I keep, I get it back and read the whole thing. Yeah, as long as you are it and so on. It's so um, much work. It's hard to say anyway how much how much money per hour I get. It's it's almost not. You cannot say. So it's anyway. It's a price where you say, okay, I do this. I don't know how much work it will be, but this is the price for that. Finish. It, <laughs> yeah, it's kind of from. A publisher's perspective as long as you are maintaining a consistent level of quality as you say it's like okay is this price worth it for me and you know you people are allowed to ask hey what is the price for this and you're willing to say okay this is the price and if oh that's a bit more than i expected then don't go with daniel dancer and that's it <laughs> but um Home asks if you work more with big companies or independents. You said in your description you've got both. To, um, both. Completely do you have both. a preference? No, uh, it's uh, it's it's completely both. I worked a lot of times with Asmodee and Pegasus and uh, other larger companies, and uh, there are always smaller companies uh, who are asking me, and I say, yeah, yeah, I can do this too. I worked for Mesa board games from Portugal and I don't know, people from all over the all over the world. I made deception for Hong Kong people, <laughs> you know, and so it, it's, it's, you know, from all over the world, smaller companies, larger companies. And of course, uh, I had some, there were one, one Kickstarter thing uh, with, with, you know, with figurines and the whole universe and a large rule book and, I don't know. It was a huge. Uh, uh, it would have been a huge project, and I said, "Okay, guys, I need so many times. I need months for this, and I need at least because I work half time, so I don't have that much time. I need at least three months for it, and it would be work for more or less nine thousand euros because it has that much." And and then they wrote back, uh, "Okay, how about two months and five thousand euros?" Uh, well, I said no. <laughs> I mean, and they worked back and forth and back and said no, no, it just doesn't work. And then they asked me why the 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 translation into Spain, into Spanish, was such more so, so, so much less expensive. And to me, it was a kind of crazy question because, well, I live at Stuttgart. I, my rent here is so much higher. I, I mean, euro is not euro. You know, it's it's just my coast and it's. Um, I, I cannot. That's I can't mm. negotiate. Well, but small game, small small publishers or, or larger companies. To me, it's the same, and it's the same price too. It's kind of I, I, it's my it's my time and it's my life, and uh, it has this price. So I kind of try to meet uh, twenty five euro an hour or something, but most of the time I end up less. Uh, <laughs> so I'm not that good at it. But it's uh, well, uh, you know, it's additional money, and and it's kind of, uh, of course, I have to do the taxes and everything, but I don't mm -hmm. pay social stuff and so on. So, but it, well, there are some questions about price or whatever. Yeah, well, it yeah, it is really this. Calculate the price. Yeah, the the problem is, I give you an example. I did Ashes, uh, Rise of the Phoenix, Born. Which was this new universe, a new fantasy universe, a card-driven spell game? You know, where uh, I guess two-player uh, mostly, where people are having special creatures with special spells and wizardry and so on and so forth. And I said, "Well, I take this money for it, as far as I can see." And I was calculating much too low because it was a new universe. It was not. If you have everyday universe, you can talk about a street and a house and meeple, whatever. If you have a universe like Star Trek, it's kind of research. I did that too. It was not published, but it, I was translating it anyway. Uh, you really have to, to see how was that spaceship called in German already. 
But if you have a new universe, you have to invent everything new, also mm. in German. And all these cards, and it was about, I don't know, three or four hundred cards, and each card had a special name, a special name with a pun in it, you know, some icy fire cracker, whatever spell. And you have to translate this into German. So this word is not just a word you translate, but a, a, a name, a creative name of something that has to work in German has to be funny a little bit, has to, and you work, I don't know, 10 minutes or 15 minutes for one word. So if you have 400 cards and they all have to match, you have to get a feeling for the universe, for the fantasy setting and so on. And you have to have, be so creative. And it's so much time that in the end, it was, it was, I, it was like giving them, giving them all the work for them for almost nothing. And I didn't have had this in mind uh, before. It was a mistake so by myself. Was that the first time that you had done a translation for a brand new universe? Uh, it was kind of new that it's that it was really each and every card with a special uh, thingy on it and so on. So this was really uh, it was really uh, first time I had this kind. And I really have to say, if I'm able to to um to say no to a project like this right now i would rather say no to this kind of project you know to this like like the kickstarter thing you know a whole new universe with all new names and all new everything and so i say oh it's so much more work that i had to calculate so much money nobody wants to pay so mm. to me it doesn't work anymore but I'm really transparent. You know, I, I talk to the people. I say, this is just too much work. I don't have the time right now. If I say I have the time, there's a deadline. I know what to do. It's 100% guarantee they are done by this spot of time, by this time. And I don't say, yeah, I will manage it somehow. And then, well, can I have another two weeks? Not, it will not happen. I say, no, I don't do it because of this. Or I will do it. <laughs> Epitomizing I mean, German efficiency. <laughs> yeah, no, it's not efficiency. It's it's self defense. I it's I cannot work twenty hours. You know, it's I'm too old for this. I'm fifty six. I, I I I'm not twenty five. Twenty well, hours work, a week? That's too much. <laughs> no, no, a day. <laughs> well, but I did I did work. Uh, there was some <laughs> something some. Of course, sometimes it's kind of you know it's. Uh, you know, C fall, you know, C fall, the legacy game by yes. uh, yeah, I've got uh, Devio, Rob Devio with the large book, the 48 yeah, 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 pages yeah. book with only entries I from all the captains. Yes. Uh, I didn't do the rules, I only did the captain's book. And I had another, uh, another guy from uh, Stefan Stadler from uh, from the, from the German. Uh, a company who translated the rule book and we were in contact we played the game together a little bit and so on and this was something we had a lot of money but in the end it was not even 10 euros an hour because it was so much it was just so much so in the end you kind of and I had live sessions with canada where we got through each and every card again and said, we have to go, we have to send it to the printer tomorrow. And I said, yeah, but there are 15 files and there are several things not clear. The first correction run of the, of the captain's book, I had, I, I got the first layout version and it, I sent it back with 250 corrections. They sent it back to me again. And this, then they only had 80 corrections, then 20, then five, then one then none. And the same with all the other files. Then there was one day left and they said, yeah, there, there are so many things. I said, no, no, here you are, you know, uh, you didn't do the 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 uh, ah, this word, I always took for the word. If you split a word into several lines of a text, you know. Uh, oh, the, hyphenate. Hi hyphenation. And I said, no, the, in Germany, you, it's wrong in German. And we have to check these cards again. I said, we have to send it to the printer in two hours i said okay let's skype about that and we skyped about that and we were live doing this corrections and and they sent the files again i looked at the no here it is uh and then we did it i don't know 
30 minutes before they sent it, it was done. And of course, work like this is more, it's not really German efficient anymore. But it was, uh, you know, it was a C4. It's more stressful. It's really stressful. Sometimes it can get really uh, he uh, heavy work. But most of the time, it's getting more smoothly. <laughs> And the legacy games, of course, they are really hard because uh, you are not able to play them before. You don't have a prototype available, and you don't, and you don't understand what what <laughs> which card means and what. So, pandemic legacy one was really an experience, and uh, it was really, you know, German is always longer. Than I mean, English. I feel like. Okay. I do, I'm <laughs> just having um, a lot of fun just letting you go. Maybe, I don't know if you would be up for coming on again in a couple of months, and maybe we can chat specifically about legacy <laughs> games and oh, you know, wow. the challenges. Oh, because, yeah. you know, talking about your involvement in Season 1 and um, Seafall, mm -hmm. but, like, Jess asks if Jess asked if I worried about people not knowing all the rules, and I thought, okay, I don't need to answer this. But I think this taps into the reason why rules are important. Because, yes, if you've got the same components and you are getting a rule wrong, you are playing a different game. Now, in some instances, that's totally fine. Like, if you are playing a game and you say, okay, you know what, this rule doesn't work for us, I would like to change this rule. Like, Paul Grogan wants more information. They don't want to have random events. They have the top card visible. So they get to cheat, see a little bit of what is coming. And okay, Paul Grogan, their group knows that Paul Grogan is making these rule changes for their house. You know, house rules, that's fine, as long as it's done in a deliberate way. But if someone gets to a game wrong, just because they are... And look, I'm familiar with French publishers. Of course I am. And I am um, familiar with, um, yeah, French designers. And, yeah, it was amazing for me, like, the first time when Yogi had been on sale. And so I was oh, you're Bez. And this was, like, people from Yellow. And they were like, oh, you made Yogi. And I was wow, they know me. But um, then as I started talking to them, it was like, okay, what they care more about is a vague notion of what you're doing and are these pieces pretty and there is a lovely craft craft work in like all these pieces and the beautiful artistry i'm not saying that um you know one approach is better than the other but i do think that if a designer has done the work to say okay putting these cards in this particular way makes the game better then that should be clear in the rules because to me, it's a designer's job to say this is a particular style of rules that will fit everyone that's within the target audience. And then the game describes what who it is for. Because we talked about good games and bad games before we started off. And Daniel's saying, oh, there's no such thing as a good or bad game. <laughs> but um, I'm just paraphrasing. But like you can, as a designer, say, hey, this is more likely to work for the people who are like more likely to play this game. And so for those people, it needs to be clear. And yeah, I mean, like I, that's well, two, why two, it's two, important two, to translate. Yeah. Well, there are two things about that. Uh, first of all, it's, it's really dependent on what kind of game it is. I mean, if you, if you really have the social interactive game where, you know, how, how you play exactly digs it, it can it can be there are much more house rules and oh we we don't score at all or whatever yeah they can they can use it more as a communication tool then it's more but if you have a more complex game and the rules were twisted and and in so little detail it's so important because the it can tilt you know it can it can just broke down if it's if this card is understood not correctly then then the whole game is and a more complicated game it can be really tricky and. Another thing is that Alex Randolph was saying uh, about game rules: the rules are the game. You know, the, if you if you place co the components in front of a bunch of people, they they play whatever they want with these components. It will probably not be the game. So, and you can change components in a lot of ways. They can be of different sizes, material, whatever. You can you can make many many difference. But the rules are 
the game and the rules are the copyrighted game. This is the ideas what the game is about are in the rules and in, in nothing else. Well, mo sometimes in, uh, components material also has text on it or information on it, of course, but uh, how the game works is in the rules. So it's very important. Yes, I would 100% agree that the rules are, I mean, obviously the rules can be put onto the cards, but then those components are still giving you the rules. Um, we've got, yeah. we had a quick question. Did you have to work on Spirits Island 2nd Edition? Because whom said that there was ah, yeah. okay. some yeah, spelling I can, I, I can go into that. Uh, we... When, when I did Spirit Island, I played it with uh, an editor from the publisher company here in here in Stuttgart. He's also living in Stuttgart, which is really uh, convenient. And we played Spirit Island and everything, but you have 300 or what cards with all these special little icons and everything. And uh, we are talking now, or we're going now into the region, into the area of mistakes mistakes are kind of wah mistakes are the worst thing you can do and as a translator you are kind of banned or from from the world if you make a mistake now first thing is almost all original rules have mistakes in them <laughs> and mistakes are kind of you know even if so many people read it and play it again and again and so on something is missing somehow it 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 happens and of course a first print run in a, a german game and and many people played uh you have you know well 10000 people testing this translation now in, in a couple of thousands of sessions of games and of course they find each little spot that maybe are not exactly the same uh, mm -hmm. wording as in english or the German card can be interpreted in a little different way than the English card. If you think twice or thrice, you know what I mean? It's kind of the English card is more one way and the German opens a little bit of interpretation or, or, or the other way around or whatever. And there are discussions you can discuss in this kind of spirit island is really card uh, driven heavy game of really really special things that can done by cards and interactive between cards so some english uh, text might be more clear with the other cards and if you have these two cards in german they open up a, a, a possibility that was not there in english if you take the english card so it's really this gazillions of possibilities that you cannot test and test and, and work out so there are kinds that can be done better sometimes it's really mistakes and sometimes it's it's just like ah, it's not as perfect as it could have been of course because we talk about a huge amount of text and possibilities and then in a second print run with spirit island there were some cards i guess where there was an icon missing or some word was mismatching and i didn't realize it in the print run proofreading it's not only my job of course it's the job of the whole editors and so on i'm not the responsible guy but uh, i give feedback of course and they were and we all we all missed some details and then uh, pegasus will get the feedback from the people and then they change some small things for the second print run and uh i did also the 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 first uh, um addition to spirit island and i uh, also translated the second edition and it's really hard to 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 get because it has to match the first in the wording and so on so it's really hard work uh, with pandemic legacy one i i also made a, a board game geek thread it was a thread where all the mistakes we made it was about i don't know five six seven mistakes uh we explained all the mistakes in a thread a spoiler free thread where i said okay when you come to february now read this so you avoid the mistake and then there's a little spoiler tag where you click yeah. on february that and, would be interesting uh, since I've so, so i so i put this thread up to to 
to and all the German people, I said, if you play Pandemic Legacy, the first print run, because they corrected things too. I said, if you have the first print run still, then look up this thread on Board Game Geek. It's in German and it explains you everything you have to keep in mind and say, oh, it's April now, <laughs> or you open up this card, then check this text that is corrected here. So it's a kind of service to do it, but it was a lot of work again. And I don't follow this thread anymore. There's it's still some discussion going on sometimes. And I say, hey, I'm out of that. It's five years ago. I, my work is done. <laughs> yeah, but, you can't be doing aftercare for every single game that no, comes your way. No, it's it's not my responsibility then. But uh, of course, it, you, you try to be as perfect as possible. But oh, sometimes... Let's uh, this is an interesting thing about the guarantees because you said that you guarantee a timeline, but can you really guarantee it? I mean, because illness <laughs> happens, sickness happens, and yeah. you know, hopefully, oh my gosh, like fingers crossed, you have a long, many years of relatively healthy life. Ahead yeah, well, of you. Uh, I guarantee it's, it's not legally. It's not legally guaranteed. Uh, I never made a contract. I always make some emails and say, okay, this money is okay and so on. And uh, so, but people pay me and I say how much I want. So it's not, but I say, okay, the timeline is to, I always ask for a deadline and I say, okay, I, I can, from my experience, I can say, okay, of how much is my everyday work in this time? I do a lot of project work. Sometimes I have more space, you know, more time. And I say, okay, I can, I can say I will do this, but sometimes the, the timeline is just too short, and and that's the thing I will not say. Yeah, well, let's see if it works. But I say, okay, this timeline is critical. I don't know if I will if I can do it. So you know, this it's of course there's sickness, of course there. Well, then I write them and say, right now I'm in a hospital and I have two broken arms, so sorry. But this didn't happen yet. I, I mean, the guarantee is not, you know, this mm. this German-like guarantee. But it's you're more, saying it's that more like, out of um, 13 years of work, you've never been late so far? Well, there were, there were some things developing in a critical way, but it didn't really depend on me. I was sending my first draft in time, but of course they have to send me back the layout so I can proofread. And sometimes then there I'm waiting for weeks and weeks and I say, where's the layout so I can proofread? And they say, yeah, yeah, we're still checking. And then they send the proofread a week before they have to print it. You know, then it's not my problem and it's not my, uh, but of course I have to be then the one who, who really works really fast. Huh? Sometimes it's not only on me how the, how the deadline is kept because it's work, you know, it's, it's going both ways. So there mm. were some some things developed in a not that good way, but until now I I always uh, you I feel did like always... you've always managed to keep your end yeah, up of the yeah. target, and um, I just put a bunch of links into the Twitch, mm. and if you are in YouTube or Facebook, you'll be able to see that anyway. Um, oh, question: Do you teach your job? Asking for <laughs> a friend. Who? I had to I had to calculate my fee first. <laughs> oh, uh, not 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 yet. Uh, no, I mean it's not really something. Uh, I, I I would say okay for this friend, <laughs> you you should tell the friend he should send me uh, an email and uh, tell me what what uh, what he what he wants to do or what he what what his questions. Or she, or she yeah. Sh sorry, friend, they, whatever. Uh, and I can I, I can tell them uh, how we can go on and and uh, if it's really going to some really professional teaching sessions, we will speak openly about any kind of any kind of money I need for that. But if it's only some some questions or some feedback from my side, it's okay. It's no problem. People ask me a lot of times. Uh, many things and it sounds like if someone wanted to actually have a weekly hour with you then that's something hmm. that you would possibly be willing to say okay this is my fee for that tower and there we go it it, it really it really depends uh, uh on uh, you know i 
as a as a screenwriter and filmmaker and so on and so forth and all these creative jobs it's always this there's always this brink of you know of doing things for free because you know it's only creativity and we all do it because we love our jobs and then at the end of the month you say you know this should have been paid maybe <laughs> or because it's worth something for people so but it develops and i'm absolutely transparent all the time i'm saying yeah we can we can start it and if it works out to become more and more i would say well now we we kind of too professional that it that i can do the service just for free anymore mm -hmm. you know it's really open i'm open to discuss everything and if it's just a, a weekly chat for for an hour with somebody and it's reasonable and, and i like to chat and everything's fine then it's fine and if it's really kind of professional input for somebody who works professionally in this well then uh, we are on a professional level and then money has to change hands it's... oh yeah <laughs> that's not made by my made by myself of course this is done by an ancestor of mine yeah that's a pick i took in 1985 in brooklyn i guess no in the bronx no in queens yeah. I mean, I actually have a question about this, but let's stick to translation. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> what would you use in German as the pronoun for non-binary? So, um, Xait is talking about people who identify as non-binary. The English uses they, but that doesn't work in German. And I think in German, wow. masculine is default, you know, gender neutral. Is that correct? Well, this is this is this is something uh, really really complicated because in German uh, we have for he we have er for she we have z and for they we have z so it's both z for <laughs> for many people or for she so this is the this is first of all complicated so a z would be both plural even if it's only male male uh, many males are z so it's kind of i don't know then the complicated thing in german is that all um in in english it's i go you go she or he goes and they go so go is kind of yeah. In German, it's different from from the singular to the plural. So if I if I use Z as a plural, I have to change all words into a plural form. So it's Z gehen and not Z geht. She goes or they go, and this they is not changed. It's still Z, and the go is then it's then changed. And so the whole sentence is everything you say, everything you write would be completely different. And and how you think it it's more complicated, I guess, than than in uh in, in, in English. And and in German it's it's a kind of discussion about uh how how to use gender and all these different forms. Uh and I, I try to uh I'm I'm not too much into i have i have uh, it sounds like there's are... just no good option at the moment uh, so that's right that that's right why we get so many yeah. german rule books defaulting to the mail well in, in german i try to at least to, to say and, and german publishers are really uh well they don't know how to handle it mostly it's the mail version the mail form is is the generic mail in german and some people uh, say, well, it should be the, the generic female <laughs> and the males are included. And uh, in, in rule books, I, I don't like the, uh, in German, you, you must do something like, you know, he slash she. And then you have to, but then it's not, it, it's another difference. In English, you have a doctor. A mm. doctor is not of any gender and not in german not in germany in germany you have an arzt or an ärztin uh, you have a pilot a pilot or a pilotin 
the female forms are all different. So you all, again, you have to change. If you change the player, you have in German Spieler und Spielerin. So there are two words. So you, if you change it into gender neutral, then the text becomes more and more unreadable. This is not easy to do. <laughs> it's not if you really change he slash she and then all the both forms into a text in a game rule, then yeah, the you text have becomes have brackets around the in. Uh, yeah, or you make a, a small asterisk or whatever. You, there are different ways. It's, it's mostly they do it in German. They do uh, we use in the beginning of the game rule. We use the male. Uh, generic male, but all females are, of course, included. Or in examples, they use uh, female player names. So they they try to put the female's uh, perspective somehow into it. But the they thing is something that in Germany is not used at all. It's not that much in discussion and it's really hard to, to change too many things. There was only one rule Uh, I translated where we, we had this, exactly this problem and we decided to use the generic female and tell in a, in a sentence that all males are also included. Um, hmm. This was a fun experience because we also, we always said about the, we always use then the Spielerin, the female form, And uh, we had some proofreaders. I, I also work, work sometimes with proofreaders of the German text or whatever. People I know, people the publisher uses or whatever. And we did it there. And the editors all sent back all the corrections because the female form was cut into the male form. They said, no, this is all wrong. <laughs> because they, they missed, the publisher missed to tell the editors or the proofreaders first that it is deliberately done and not by mistake. Uh, I, I, I liked it. I, I like. Uh, I, I'm really into uh, all these discussions, and I'm, I'm, I read a lot of feminist literature, and I'm. I have trans friends and whatever. But in every in everyday language, I, I have to. My mind is kind of old, you know, and it's kind of. I, I sometimes I, I'm not used into this new kind of language. It's hard for me to to be correct all the time. But I, I'm open minded for this and. Uh, in the rules well yeah <laughs> yeah it's only it's only a couple of couple of things i i read some rebecca I saw read it one right of now. these books i've read amanda palmer's book which is a really powerful book i think that this oh, for yeah. me is if you want to run a kickstarter you know i think that this is a really good book which kind of talks about the notion of the relationship because i think that whilst it's easy to talk about oh this thing will give you more marketing and this will bring in more people sometimes it's important to think about take a step back and think why are you doing this and yeah. um be a little bit more philosophical um, and yeah. some underlying mindset spotted from the editors there yeah and so i think what home is suggesting is that there is some you know strong gender bias some cultural um patriarchy Yeah, well, I, uh, well, in, in, in German, well, I'm in a game designer association, for instance, too, in Germany. And we have, I don't know, 10% females or, or trans people. It's all a, a male, it's a male scene. Board games are many more male people or people who, I don't know, what's the English, uh, considering identify themselves as identify as male are playing this and, and we have this you know this this uh, scandal things like in the board game industry kind of really rude stuff against females and so on and so forth and it's it's kind of of course the target audience is kind of well publishers think if we go too far then the audience will say oh now I have to read this gendered rules oh no why should that Yeah. I mean, I and feel it's... like this is something oh, that we should Gary, have yeah, a great. big panel about. Like, yeah, you know, yourself, a, myself, um, I don't know, Talita, because maybe Talita is Brazilian and someone who speaks some other language. And we can talk about, because <laughs> I also speak 4C, 
and I can't remember who it was. I was talking about, you know, the fact that in 4C you've got un, so there is no gendered version for he or she. Um, but at the same time, it's very misogynist. A lot of the culture, um, yeah. you know, for the past um, 100 years, I would say that the culture in Iran has been quite misogynist in a variety of ways. Absolutely. From the last Shah who basically said, you are not allowed to wear the hijab because actually people don't know that. Right now, the hijab is um, mandatory, which is terrible. But before that, the hijab was censored, which is actually equally bad, in my opinion. And my mom was explaining that's why people... And um, apparently Mandarin is gender neutral when speaking. Oh, um, yeah. oh yeah. and bas But yeah, basically, I think that we should have a panel about this if you're up for this. I don't know who else, but someone who speaks another language. <laughs> but yeah. um, then let's try to wind this down because there's so many things that we didn't get yeah, into, yeah, yeah. but let's make sure that we got to Time the, is running, right? We should do um, a second and a third version. <laughs> um, let's make sure we get to the questions that I yeah, suggested. Sure. We. So I wrote at the start, if games are to be enjoyed worldwide, translation is yeah. essential. What skills are essential in translating a game? Obviously, let's talk about language-to-language -language translation rather than adaptation for, but I'm hearing, okay, you need to know the language, but not only that, you need to understand the culture and you need to understand the people for who you are yeah, translating yeah. for. Yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, it's kind of, it, it just matched. It, I, I was matching so good into this job because um, as long as I can think, I, I write. I write. I was storytelling. I'm writing all the time. So, so language and text are always in 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 my in my head more than maybe other people. And uh, then I started gaming, and I I play games for 50 years now, and uh, even more and more in starting in 2005, starting with board game geek and all this, and I was really in the board game scene. And then I was. You know, with the screenwriting and all these things, you work with text, you work as a team, you work on changing text to perfect, to make them more perfect. And then after the these starting years, 2007 and so on, I was coming more and more into this. And I think you really need, you need to be a gamer. You have to be into board games. That's, that's for sure. You have to be a board gamer. Uh, knowing what the game terms are, knowing lots of different games and game groups and so on. So your gaming experience with, with you need to know the target group you have to. If if you if you translate a role playing game, you should have played a lot of role play games, of course, and 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 know the scene and know the people, and and then the language thing is another thing. You need to have a really a, a, a kind of a. a, a how to work with the language you need to be very precise and i'm a perfectionist so i'm really good at that i'm really german there to be really consistent in your language and so on to shorten sentences german always is longer usually because you know these small short english words are great and in germany we have these long words because if you have a uh in, in english you have several short words like you just put them in a row. And that doesn't uh, sound that much longer. But in German, Schrein, that's, that's like six letters, right? Yes, of course. <laughs> it is kind uh, of... Wait, is Schwein actually seven? S-C-H-W. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so that's more than yeah, twice sure. as many. Yeah. And then, and so, but but I, I am so far now, from my experience, sometimes my German text is shorter than the English. Why? Because I, I realize when in the English text there are uh, things repeated in, 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 one, in one paragraph, it's, it's repeated in, an, in a not efficient way and you can, you, can, you can do two sentences into one shorter or whatever. You can change a little bit in the structure and it can be much shorter to achieve uh, that you have to fit into the layout. Uh, the game rules are not on rules; they are in a layout. So it's really hard to get to get it in the layout on a card or whatever. A card has just that space. On Pandemic Legacy, you have these small, and the stickers were 
you know, two lines, two two lines and one and a half in English. And in my German translation, it was two lines, but they were full. And then they came up from the publisher and said, oh, the stickers have to be a bit smaller. So the English text was already filling all the space and my German was too long. And then you have to be really creative in the language. You really have to be creative that you call a, a, a helicopter pilot, not a Hubschrauber pilot, but just a heli pilot. You have to just shorten things and you have to make abbreviation or whatever. You have to, in grammar, you have a lot of things in grammar going on that you don't use the longer version of the sentence you can construct, but you construct it more shortly. And you have to have a lot of experience. And I, right now I'm, I'm really good at that. So that's kind of experience there. And despite what Holmes says, I mean, presumably there's got to be some understanding of the base material and some level of authenticity to the intent of what was originally going on. So that everyone around the world, if Absolutely. you come to an international game of, I mean, I don't know how you would do a tournament for Pandemic Legacy Season 1. I know there's pandemic tournaments, but, you know, like if you were, yeah, maybe Spirits Island, you could have a tournament of that. And if you have a worldwide tournament of Spirits Island, you want everyone to be playing exactly the same game, right? Uh What's the question again exactly? <laughs> um, uh, yeah, basically, um, it. I'm just saying it's super important to have the correct precision of what the original rules are meant to be so everyone absolutely. around the world is playing yeah. the same game. No, for, first of all, as I said, the first reading and all the questions to the editors, you have to be really clear about everything as, as, as clear as possible as it gets. Uh, and, uh, and then comes the text work, and uh, but you know it's it's kind of uh, I wanted to say something else. What was it? Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, you have to have also a, a, a kind of feeling for the text because the technical text is one thing, but the other thing is you know the attitude or the or the how funny is the text, how much is it for children, how elaborate, how fantasy, how dark is the text. Sometimes it's really into, into be creative here too. And, uh, you know, I, I did five, I guess, five translations for the Lemon Brothers for by Fragor Games, the Scottish mm. guys, who are really crazy and did all these uh, crazy figures and really funny, uh, uh, fantastic stuff. You know, they were only able to do that because it was such small print runs. Yeah, and yeah, they and they were always like... sold out, sold out before Essen, and in Essen they just gave it away. And they had all these puns and all these funny things in the text, and it was all. And then, and when I did translation, I realized the fun stuff was only in the Chrome text. It was never in the text. You really have to be precise. There were no, there were no puns in in the precise rules, always in between when they explain a little bit about this and this. And then I did some because all the puns didn't work in German, of course. You know, it's, it's, it's just Can you word have games. Your own puns? Absolutely. I made a collection then, depending on the theme, with Poseidon's kingdom. It was just fish and water and ocean. And I did a whole collection of puns working in German on this theme and on this material, whatever, just collecting them. And then I was looking for, for, for spaces in the text where I can put them in more or less, you know, randomly, because, because it was done, honestly, random in the English text too. But to, to save the, the level of, of puns and, and how, how, you know, the, the Scottish guys were really like, they did really bad jokes sometimes and you say okay do i want to have a bad joke here or how bad how how is the humor in german is different from the english one so you really have to be this this is another skill you need so you know you have to see okay this is and this is presumably fun that's something that takes more time and you need to oh, charge yes. a lot oh, more yes. for and um, no i don't charge the frago they always get the same the same charge for all of their games long lifelong it's the only company I guarantee it's that much money and two of your games copies because we work together for such a long time and I will never charge them more. <laughs> well, 
Well, I hope Exception. that um, this sort of generosity never becomes an undoing. Yeah. No, um, no, we, we, are, oh, we are best friends. I met them in Scotland and so on. We, we are really close and it's really great. And I, I don't really want to be too, too you know, professional. Like, ah, no, no. Other I'm questions? About, like, um, the final thing is what pitfalls need to be avoided? That's the final question that I want to ask. <laughs> Well, Tell we, me we, about one yeah. or two mistakes. We can go into it. Maybe I like, yeah, hopefully we can have you back on again at some point in the not too distant future. D don't think too fast that you have understood the text. D don't be too quick. Oh, it means that. Oh, I have a German equivalent. Read it twice. Read it again. Check other meanings of the same card see how the card text for instance is inter interactive with other things and so on so be really again and again don't think too quick that it's done and that you know what it means so it's self be really sentence for sentence again ask is it really what i thought what i think it means or is there another meaning i haven't seen yet so it's really, this is the most thing. The other, well, the other pitfall, I don't know. It's kind of, uh, don't don't hesitate asking questions. That's the other thing. If you think this is not clear, ask people. If uh, I annoyed, I asked Martin Wallace, I asked Rob Davio, I, I wrote them emails with 20 questions. I said, this sentence, I don't quite, do you really mean this? Is it, I, I cannot... Uh, I, I don't know the game good enough, but does it really mean what I mean? And they described in different words, and then they wrote back, uh, yes, it means exactly this and this, and they wrote it in, in other terms, and they said, okay, I really understand it correctly. So be, communicate. Yeah, if you are working with people, yeah. you need to talk to them. <laughs> yeah. And translation is is the area of misunderstanding anyway. I mean, it's really you really have to be as precise as you can get yeah i could <laughs> say stories that i'm not going to but um of oh uh, home is asking something interesting okay we'll have this as the final question okay what do you think about a full-time job in translating yeah. uh, as a german at a german publisher so like I think they're talking about an uh, internal position for a German publisher. Do you think it's... Yeah. I'm not familiar with this term, piecework. Accord are bite. Accord <laughs> are bite. Uh, yeah. Or okay. Uh, <laughs> Could you um, translate into English what piecework and accord are bite means? Um, it means that you are paid by how many... You uh, how how much you 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 uh, how much you 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 get? And you're in a, in, a, uh, in a in a factory. You are not paid by hour, but by the pieces you get done. Mm. So you're really into you know it's more stressful. So you and, need to rush. You can't do a great job. Right. So yeah. Uh, well, honestly, a huge publisher offered me a full time job. And but it was not at Stuttgart, and I had to move. I had to change my whole life. So well, ooh. Where to? and and it was no. I can't say that because you know okay. the company then. Uh, but they offered me because they getting bigger, and they had a, a, a department of localizing with six seven people, and I would be become part of that. Of course, a dream job for somebody but to me it's always you know if you do it full time and you don't do anything else then you are in a cage you know right now i'm writing a novel and i wrote 160 pages in 10 days you cannot do that if you do it full time and you cannot pick the things you like and you cannot uh you know you cannot say to a publisher no I don't want to do that. It's too much work. It's too stressful right now. It's the freedom I really enjoy in being a freelance guy here. You know, when I had the divorce, I was I was telling the, the publishers I was regularly working with, I said to them, right now I'm not doing anything for about, I don't know, for half a year or a year. Don't ask me. Look for somebody else. I'm right now. I cannot do anything. And afterwards, I was writing a couple of emails. Hi, 
I'm in the job again. Ask, uh, give me something to do. And this freedom is really, to me, it's really great. But if you're really into it, of course, for some people, it could be a great, a great job to do exactly this. Hmm. And it sounds like your mind works in a similar way to mine that we both want to <laughs> ideally do multiple things. I mean, I've been thinking yeah. how much I would love to have my keyboard from Glasgow over here. And then maybe I could do some evening things at, I don't know, 8 p.m., UK time, maybe sometimes I would just do nothing but playing my keyboard for an hour and singing improvised <laughs> songs. And so... Oh, oh, oh I, one thing I want to say about translating, uh, because I also did my, I also did uh, games or create games and I published three of them. And for, for game designers, if you are, if you are uh, able to, to in, in several languages, it's great for you in the development process, translate your rules into the other language. Do this and do it back again. You will realize, because I did it for my first self-published game, I translated it into English. I let it proofread by, by people, but I did the first... And then I realized when you cannot translate it, you realize how unclear your own rules were. It's this is what because you say this this multi thing. If you if you translate your rules into another language, you realize that this paragraph isn't working because you you mm -hmm. have a hard time to translate it, and then you see where the where the where the where the, where the uh, spots in your rules are not really good work. No. stuff like that. I want to um, close it off. I'm sorry that I yeah. have to be a bit more forceful with the ending i want to quickly yeah. acknowledge scott's comments that you know depending on your situation some people might not have that luxury you know scott if have we already got to date are you coming on at some point um but yeah it would mm -hmm. be lovely to have yeah maybe we could chat about that later on um but um yeah let's do the recap which, sorry, yeah. finding my banner. So basically we talked mm -hmm. about um, food, we talked about translations, we talked about mechanical pencils, we talked about your book about growing these wings. I assume mm -hmm. it's in German, otherwise I would actually be interested to read it. But <laughs> um, if there are German speakers who are interested in this book, could they ask to read it potentially? Well, I'd first have to write it. <laughs> oh, it's sorry, still... I, thought you'd, I thought this was no, the book no, that you'd done. No, in it was a very first draft. It was 10 days creativity and my first draft. And now okay, I have so to rework it. you have to do some editing before you show it to anyone. Some, yeah. <laughs> okay. Of course, so, yeah, um, yeah. We talked about the origins of you. You talked about going from one group to another, about the differences between Germany and France in exactitude about preparation, about how important communication is with all the people that you're working with, about fixed fees and negotiation and how it can be a headache, about the cost of making up words, like the time costs, the inner, um, corrections and guarantees, a little bit about Spirit's Island 2nd Edition, about the skills to be a gamer, knowing that language, not just the German language, but the language of being a gamer, about knowing the target audience, and some vital tips. Don't rush rush into assumptions. Double check everything. Consider the synergies. Consider the interactions. And then we touched very briefly upon gender neutrality and legacy games and potential part versus full time. But you know, there's so much more that we could chat about. If people want to find you, then where would you like to be found? Oh well. <clears throat> Uh, I'm, I'm a conservative guy, so I'm still on Facebook. <laughs> uh, and you will find me on, on Facebook. There's a game translator, but also a personal page uh, on Facebook. Uh, you can just email uh, Daniel at Game Translator, DE, or wherever. Uh, you can also write me on Board Game Geek. I don't know, wherever you want. Uh, these are all fine. <laughs> I, I check all the incoming stuff uh, anyway, and so... That should all be clickable. And if you want to find me, I am stuffabez.com, stuffabez.bigcartel.com, twitter.com slash stuffabez, instagram.com slash stuffabez, twitch.tv slash stuffabez for, you know, my streams 10 a.m. every day and 8 p.m. on Tuesdays, facebook.com slash things by Bez is a thing. And there's my email. 
If you want to find my Discord, go to stuffwithpets.com slash Discord. And yeah, if you want to find out my streams, I want to say thank you to everyone. And very quickly, we've got like two minutes over to you. What are you up to? You can share anything you want to. So anyone in the comments, what are you doing? Is there anything you want to share? Hopes, ambitions, whether it's exciting, trivial, or important, or just fun. So um, yeah, thank you very much, um, Scott, for following along. Yes, I think it's great that you're asking these questions. <laughs> um, the book klingt schön interessant. Yeah. Thank you. Um, and yeah, it's. I think this is a thing. Like, there's probably a whole topic to be done about having better communication. And thank you, Edward Twin, and sending and application is up next. Um, I'm looking forward personally to, yeah, streaming. Tomorrow, I've got my second group thing, which is, I believe, with Alan Paul, Phoebe Wilde, and potentially a surprise guest, who I don't want to reveal, otherwise it won't be a surprise, but they've said they almost certainly can come. But it's all about your emotions during a first Kickstarter. Mm -hmm. Because, yeah, just that oh. emotion sounds like that emotional ride. Um, anything you want to share very quickly, anything you're looking forward to? Feel free to contact me. Okay. Everybody, I'm really communicative. It's just feel free. Just don't don't hesitate in any way. I am continuing to think of you, Kate. Lots of love. Um, and yeah, I was. Um, I'm sorry, I misunderstood your um, desire to watch Netflix. I should have said, oh yeah, I'm going to stream. Um, that's not the surprise guest. Sorry, the surprise guest is someone that I've already had on before, because that's the kind of role that I've decided to have um but yes thank you very much everyone i'm also looking forward to seeing chris and mccall later this evening and i'm just going to check who is playing oh there's um alu sam who's a musician doing chill piano guitar and ukulele and yeah that sounds quite cool um so maybe we'll go there if folk fancy um so please share spread the word if you have enjoyed it there will be future streams um and check out daniel on all the links for now there is only one thing left to do and this is to say bye 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 sorry did you have anything left to say daniel uh no i i i would like to do this again with some other topic or same again Brilliant. or whatever with, let's or definitely other people. do it i i High like five. this and time was running but it was so good. yeah <laughs> no it was it was fantastic it was great to contacting people in these times where you are kind of you know short of contacting people and Aww. without Essen and whatever i i really liked all these people here uh, contacting on uh, commenting and everything so it's oh, great. Yeah. It was great thank for me. You, so thank you very and much, Bez. Shouts out to great. yeah everyone in the chat for amazing yeah. questions and comments. And there are so much chats about all the German yeah. cities. And thank you everyone for doing this. But for now, thank bye, you. Bye bye bye. This is a goodbye bye -bye. song. Bye 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 bye. Thank you for watching along. Bye 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 bye. This is the end of the show. Bye 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 bye. And now it's time to go. Do 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 do. Bye 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 bye. This is a goodbye song. Bye 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 bye. Thank you for then English. English, English, yeah. Ciao, ciao. Ciao, ciao. Tschüss. This is the end of the show. Ciao, can, ciao. High five. Tschüss, no, high five. Here, no, no. Wait. There, there, there. Here. And now it's yeah. time <laughs> to go. Time to go. Okay. See you all. Bye bye. Bye-bye. And that's it.